So I welcome now uh, what I see here is Peter Fleischhans from ASPN. I see Ricky Nitzkein from RCP. I see Fabien from CNCP. I see Michael from Germany, from Pivena. I see Susanna from Atu, from Slovakia, and who else? Uh, Stephanie from also from CNCP. So I will ask you the questions, Fabienne and Stephanie, ask you the questions about um, about App Store. So it was a wonderful project what I saw. Uh, there was a little bit of confusion what happened really in France because you were the lead partner of this project and uh, whenever I looked uh, on the newsletters these wonderful yearbooks you made and I looked on uh, uh, Facebook sites uh, to App Store I couldn't see any project uh, demonstration project in in France. Okay, so so whoever wants to start a few. <laughs> okay, hello to everybody. Um, I just want to have more info. Uh, Eileen uh, from uh, from Snub is there as well, and she's part of. Uh, so please, of Eileen, uh, turn on your. <laughs> Hi, Hello, hi. Eileen from. Hi. Oh, Barbara, Barbara jumped in there from too. Hugh. And Hugh, where are you, Hugh? Barbara, turn on your video, then you are visible here. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so I, I will try to be uh, very concise regarding the, 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 the building in France. In fact, since the beginning of the project, we were faced to several issues, link, of course, to to finance um, so it takes so many times you know to arrange everything uh, regarding the financial aspect of the cncp itself so that's why the project goes on everything goes on regarding you know the partners and the work that we have done on a day-to-day -day, um yeah day-to-day -day work um, we achieve a lot of things but the the the, the building um process uh, was a bit slow linked to these financial uh, issues so from now i can say that uh, all these financial issues are solved at least we <laughs> yes we just had the the authorization of interreg um to to for an extension of time to be able to finish the project and the, the french investment and um i can say now that uh, the, the all the building uh, permit is done, all the plans are done, and now we are starting to work on, on this. So you will probably have more uh, photos very soon and videos, of course. So as far as I understood, the project is in Montagy, so there's also the oldest strawberry house of Europe. It's more yeah. than 100 years old now, it's still standing, and it's in the property of CNCP, as I understand. Yeah. And uh, you will uh, renovate or build new a uh, workshop area behind this uh, old building, where also the in 2015, I think the SPG took place, yeah? Yes, but uh, again, we, we were faced to several administrative issues. Uh, since the, the Feuillette, the Maison Feuillette, has been registered as an heritage uh, building. So that means um, the Ministry of Culture didn't want us to, re to renovate the shed with straw. They want us to leave it as it is today. <laughs> So administrative issues, as I explained. So what we have decided is to, as we have bought, you know, um, a new parcel, a neighborhood par parcel. So the uh, architect has to rethink the whole the whole pro uh, project. So we will um, work on this uh, this new parcel, and we will do both um, new building and renovation. And it's going to be. Um, um, yeah, retrofit building uh, with uh, in insulation. It it won't be, um, I would say, uh, uh, filling. It won't be filling uh, with straw, but it's gonna be, uh, and it won't be with a shop straw as well. 
uh, it's going to be kind of classical uh, external uh, retrofit. As we have two uh, <laughs> ladies from UK here, um, Barbara Jones and Eileen Sutherland, uh, you had more luck in UK, I think. So can you tell a little bit, a little bit about this project? We, uh, we saw a little bit from Phil, uh, from Haven Puff, uh, who is also the um, uh, treasurer of ESPAC in UK. But can you, will you add something to the UK project, demonstration project, which is finished now, as I understood, yeah? I think that, that you know, I, I can't add much to the building. I think Phil is the best person to talk to about that, or perhaps Bob may have something to add. But there's things that in Upstraw <coughs> that went on that weren't to do with the building. And, um, you know, we really should get those points over. For example, we trained over 2,000 people face to face, all of the partners, you know, uh, no mean achievement. All of those people now know about straw and hopefully there'll be a multiplier effect. And um, on the MOOC online, we, we trained over 6,000 people. So, you know, these are, these are big things. They're not buildings. That's not actually putting the straw in, but actually it has a big effect on, um, on how we actually get people to specify straw, to reassure them, to tell them, that there, there are ways of overcoming any problems or nervousness they have. And I hope that we've been able to do that, you know, because it's been good fun. And I think it's um, a good outcome, really good outcome. So one question to the MOOC. The MOOC is an uh, online uh, learning uh, strawberry course, uh, strawberry training. And it, it uh, aired already, so it was online, but then it was not online. Will it when will be the next date when it's online in English, for example, and not in okay. French? We think, we think in January. This is, a, this is a tricky area, you know, and this is about projects being funded and then ending. And um, we were asked to do the MOOC twice uh, during the Upstraw project, and we did it. It's done. There's, no, <laughs> there's nothing to um, support it going forward. However, um, I think Americ and, um, and the French platform that he's using there are happy to run this programme once a year. I think that's my understanding, Steph. Is that right? And yeah. I think the next, the next one will session, have to start yeah, in January. 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 Yeah. In January, the next session. Yeah. 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 So it'll be in, in both languages in January. Laura, you are still busy in, in straw bale trainings and workshops, so, uh, or, or what else do you want to add to Eileen's uh, description of Upstraw? While Barbara's getting organised, I'd just like to say as well that we did ESBG 19, which was blinking wonderful. <laughs> We're very yeah. pleased, very, very pleased not to be doing ESBG 21. Thanks, Herbert. <laughs> So what I wanted to say is that the Upstraw project has been absolutely massive in its in the breadth of what we have covered. Our remit was to increase the number of public buildings that are made out of straw. And that's not just about building buildings, which is which we have. We will have achieved five new public buildings at the end of this project. Um, France has had a lot of, of uh, bureaucratic problems, as you've heard. But we've, we've set up a, a massive database in Zotero, which has collected all of the current research and old research in straw bale building from around the world. It's been no mean feat to do that amongst the five countries. And that is freely available to everybody. That, is, that in itself is a massive resource available to any, anybody who is trying to get straw bale buildings through planning and building regs. We have also carried out um, environmental product declaration certificates for each of the five countries. They are just being verified now. So that as well, you, I can't tell you how big a step that is to to verify as to to being able to get straw bale buildings passed professionally at the highest level through each country's regulatory system 
it's it's been a lot of hard work to do that but that's what we've got we've also got um a technical guide which we are finalizing for the uk which is the way that that it will help architects and designers and specifiers get their buildings through building regulations in the uk so that's in all of the countries of the united kingdom not just england that has been a mammoth amount of work as well we've been working with john butler who has worked very hard on the the sort of techie side of things to to look at all the research collate it all and and give informed decision making and and show the evidence for where all our data comes from and that will be useful not just for the uk but for other countries as well to see all of that technical data written down it's been out for peer review for the last few months and we've had some very very good feedback from eminent people um, in the field so we're very excited about that that we're just waiting for the verification of the epd so that we can get that last bit of information into that document and then that will also be freely available to anybody who would like to make use of it we've got 12 bim objects sorted out so for those who are not designers that's um those are um technical uh, objects that you can put into computer aided design drawings that speed up the process and also give you lots of information in a little bit of a drawing which is the modern way that drawings are going and that will also encourage people who've never done straw building design before to start doing it because BIM is quite popular and is getting more so and uh, so all of these things they add up to a huge huge step forward but they're not sort of sexy they're not you're not going to see them they're not like having that fantastic building at hastings that the consortium has built you know they're not like that visible but actually these things will make a, a really really big difference in the next few years to the numbers of architects and designers and local authorities etc who start building with straw so it's it's a really it's like having a megaphone and saying we're on the map you know straw bale building is serious it's not these hippie shack things at the end of the garden it's serious professional buildings that we want to see everybody doing so you know the upstart straw project has been a, an enormous amount of work but it's really, really come out with something really valuable for, for everybody. And, Thank uh, you. Thank it's you, been Barbara. A pleasure working with different European countries. Really, it's really yeah. great to do that. Thank you, Barbara. And thank you all for this description of Abstro. Uh, Phil uh, Christopher is here, but uh, he has uh, his project or this project which he built, the Abstro project in Hastings. Uh, he has in the country presentation, so it's tomorrow, and he will answer the questions to this uh, UK project uh, tomorrow. Uh, Dirkie, uh, is um, Cyprian here from SPAC? Do you want to add something to this? Hello. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I've, I've actually found the whole process absolutely uplifting. You know, um, the amount of people that have taken on board Upstraw, um, I'm really engaged with it. Uh, specifically, um, I think it's been really good to work around the work that's been happening in Hastings. Um, Mary and Phil have done a fantastic job on that side. And it's really helped us to promote the, the word of straw around the country. Um, I think the public sector really will be tapping into this in the very near future thank you Cyprian. 
I want to say to the Amstrad project that ESPA will or already took over a lot of the results, the wonderful results from Amstrad. We have this um, this big database of stroping houses. There are about 1,600, 1,700 houses now on the ESPA webpage. And the Sotero database, the research database, the BIM models and, and, and those things. So we know how much you worked for this project and we absolutely appreciate it and we are proud and um, happy that uh, ESPA can proceed with these results. Okay. So, I will... Can I just add something? Yeah, sure. Yes. Uh, yeah, I just would like to add that, um, first of all, it was a human uh, adventure. And it's, it's very important, I think. It was incredible, you know, all the, the solidarity between us. Uh, we are all faced, you know, to so many issues within the project and we were all close together and tried to solve it and we solved the problem, the issues. Mm -hmm. So I think that's the first point to, to highlight regarding this project. It was yeah. a fantastic human adventure. I think it's also fair to say that we couldn't have done it without you, Stephanie. Oh. That, um, <laughs> no, we really couldn't because you're just very calmly dealing with the financial side of things. And we've had some quite problematic issues, as you know, with these interred projects, with the financial side. And it's without you, we could not have done it. And I think we all need to give you a big round of applause. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>